Looks like another gorgeous day outside, but I'm inside the cabin because I want to talk on the progress I made in the last little while. Uh, because the last video was putting in the new flooring, looked really good, and the next step was working on that kitchen cabinet. Now I figured optimistically it was going to take me three or four days and I could get another video out within a week. Well, it took a little longer, and uh, yeah, a lot longer as a matter of fact. That's why I didn't have a new video out. It's done now. I'm dying to show it to you. But first, just let me go back to where we left off. It's that classic tale of the old abandoned kitchen counter that nobody loved. I know a lot of people are saying, forget it, Slim, throw it out, it's hog ugly, but no. I think I can make this into a decent kitchen counter and cabinet. So to start, I dragged it out to the deck and proceeded to remove that grungy plywood front. I put the counter on its back so that I could see the bottom part and this is where the third shelf has to go and uh, it's just a matter of how to get it there. I obviously can't get it through the top, there's not enough room and the sides in the back are also covered as well. The only way I can get the third shelf in is through the bottom and even then I have to remove these two support pieces so that I can slide it in and wiggle it around. So. Next step, remove these support pieces. I used a nail puller to remove the nails and a flat crowbar to pry off the board. My oscillating tool cut off the nails I couldn't access. The shelves were cut from half-inch plywood with one good side. I needed notches cut out around supports, which is another thing my oscillating tool was really handy for. Pushed the shelf beyond where it was needed so I had room to fasten the support pieces below. Additional support pieces needed to be cut, which is why I brought out my miter saw. The second new shelf was cut for the right side of the cabinet. I fit the bottom one first and after I installed the top. With the shelves in place, I started on the doors. These were made from 12 inch wide knotty pine boards which I also cut down for the support pieces. Once positioned, they were glued and screwed in place. Well, I've got the shelves in and I'm making progress on the doors, but one thing I really have to look into is the drawers. Uh, I want them on this side and in the cabin I found this. An old drawer, don't know what it was for. There's no cabinet for it. It's kind of big, but it's the right depth. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this front off. I'm not going to use that, but I can certainly use this plywood. And uh, what I think I'm actually going to do is just cut it in half or maybe a four inch piece and like a six or a seven inch piece. And that'll give me actually two drawers already built. I just need to put another bottom in one and uh, put a frame around it. So that's what I'm going to do. 
as I'm working on this, there's a pileated woodpecker in the background pecking on a tree. It's really cool. There's so many birds around right now. I don't know why. Cutting the shelf in half looked kind of scary, but the saw fence actually made it quite easy. For the bottomless drawer, I added support trim with finishing nails and glue. Then set a new bottom in place made from salvaged 3 16th inch plywood. The next part was building a side for the drawer section of the cabinet. Once the end piece was built, I smoothed it out with a belt sander and 150 grit sandpaper. I was happy to find that I only needed a 2 by 3 foot piece of quarter inch finished plywood to do all the trim in the front. I clamp and glued it in place without using nails. Most of the cutting and sanding is now done. So I brought the cabinet inside the cabin to finish it. I want to put on the drawer section. I can't do that out on the deck because once I put on the drawer section, I'll no longer be able to fit it in the door. So it's got to be done inside. Um, I've got the sliding rails on the side here already mounted and two support pieces. And on the drawers themselves, I've got them mounted both sides, two drawers. However, in order to make sure everything is true, and I have this side piece as well, these, uh, these drawer slides are very sensitive. They've gotta be really bang on. So rather than make the frame first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the drawers in first and just let them balance on this side, and then I can cut those cross pieces. That way everything is true. And it also brings into another uh, thing that I found out is when you're repurposing old furniture, don't make assumptions that everything was done perfect. Because there's one thing that was really off, and I'm glad I caught it right now, but the front and the side are not at 90 degrees. When you, uh, like this original one here, when you put the square on it, the back has this huge gap here, and that's terrible. Uh, what I did is I put a little spacer, and then I put my support piece. So now it's perfectly true and the drawers will come out parallel, not at an angle, which would not be a good thing. Okay, I think I've got everything ready. So I'm gonna start assembling the drawer section and see how it fits. Now, just one little side note, when you're putting sliding drawers on any cabinet, you should do a fit up where it's actually going to be. When I put this cabinet back to where I'm going to use it, I found out the floor's got a slight tilt to it and it's going down that way. Problem is, if I just put the, the slides on where I thought it was parallel and they're actually tilting down, the drawers are gonna be sliding out all the time. So what I did is I tilted them just a couple of degrees back and that'll compensate it for it. And I also put extra trim underneath just to make sure the top is parallel. But little things like that can be a real annoyance if you don't figure it out before you start installing. Assembling the drawers would have been a lot easier with two people, but I managed by using my body to hold the end piece upright while I awkwardly inserted the drawers. I think that worked well. 
drawers slide out nicely, nice and smooth. And I put a couple of supports here and a backing board. Makes it just a little bit more rigid. It still kind of wobbles, but once the countertop's on, and I'll fasten it to the countertop, that'll help. But I do have to put some support on the front. I've got a piece right here. Go like that. And a piece right there. And I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to continue with this uh, finishing trim right around here. That should do it. Almost done. One challenge for me was selecting different stains for the wood. I felt that the cabinet face needed to be darker, so I tried an English chestnut oil stain. This would later be finished with a coat of gloss polyurethane. The most time-consuming part of this rebuild was the countertop. The 2x12 salvaged pine planks were cut to size, but weren't wide enough, so I added a 1.5 inch thick spruce strip to the middle. The edges were then glued and clamped into place. I also added additional support to the bottom before flipping the countertop over. I ended up using several belts of coarse sandpaper to do that top, and I had to recharge my power station off-site to keep up with the energy requirements. Once the rough sanding was done, I needed to fill the gaps. And rather than use a commercial wood filler, I simply mixed a polyurethane stain with sawdust and rubbed it into the cracks and holes. As should be expected, more sanding with 150 grit was required after the filler had hardened. With most of the surface prepared, I then cut 22 inches off the end as I wanted part of the top to be removable. I'll explain why later on. With the last of the sanding complete, I brought the countertop inside to finish. First I applied some pre-stained wood conditioner, then a coat of honey pine gloss polyurethane. Two other coats were required to achieve a smooth glossy countertop. Well, the doors and the drawers need handles. And uh, I found this piece of really crappy, knotty pine. Look at the edge, it's just falling apart. But it has this gorgeous grain to it. It's dark, lots of neat uh, patterns. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna make a straight edge here first, and then just take a chunk off it and use that for the wood to form a basis of the, uh, the handles. I think it'll work well. Here's an interesting side note. If you didn't notice, I actually burst a blood vessel in my right eye after straining to lift the countertop by myself. And rather than gross everybody out, I just stopped doing any close-ups for a week. Would anyone trust a red-eyed ghoul? After cutting a long strip of board, I used a one and a quarter hole saw to start. I drilled two holes for each handle, spacing them so they overlapped slightly. Then I used the oscillating tool to cut out the pieces in between. The table saw cut the boards into separate pieces. Next started the forming. I used my belt sander upside down to gently form the curved edges.
For the inside hole, I used a coarse grit 1 inch sanding drum on my portable drill. Now if you want to know how not to cut the handles apart, this is it. What I should have done is clamp this to a board before cutting. Fortunately, I made extra handles in case I did something stupid. Well, there's nothing more tedious and time consuming than sanding. And I've had to sand a lot. All the boards needed to be sanded, some of them several times. And now I'm on the handles, which I'm doing one by one by hand. But it's not that bad if it's a beautiful day and you've got a favorite beverage and you're out on a patio. It's actually quite relaxing. There are many other parts that needed cutting, sanding, fastening, and finishing, like the backsplash that I am installing here. The interior of the cabinet was also primed and painted, and when dried, I attached brackets to secure the countertop. Pretty soon I had pieces strewn all over the cabin floor in various stages of finishing. After all was dry, the hinges were installed, The trim pieces glued on, and the handles screwed in place. It was certainly a lot more work than I originally anticipated, but as I started fastening the final components into the cabinet, the vision I had at the beginning was actually starting to take shape. But the ultimate question is this. Was my new cabinet really going to be both functional and visually appealing, or had I just created another monster? Well, there you go. Now I think you understand why it took me so long, and the building is over and done with, finished. Now I can finally do the reveal, and it's right over here. So what do you think? Looks good for a cabin, right? Nice, long, smooth countertop, easy to clean. It's got a backsplash right across. However, there was a little bit of compromise because the window is so low, I had to reduce the backsplash here. I just used a, a live edge piece uh, that I had kicking around. And I also installed uh, two sash lifts in the window, so I can still open it. Now, as far as the front, I've got three shelves on this side. You know, that's good for like uh, dry goods and dishes. In the middle, for pots and pans. And the two sliding drawers. Ball bearing slides, really nice and smooth. Now this section here is actually detachable. And uh, you can see the line right here. The reason I have it detachable is I have to remove it should someone want to service the electrical panel, which is hidden behind this picture. And it also makes it a little bit easier that if I have to move this out, it's gonna be hard when it's a full length, so that cuts it down. Now because of that, I've just got a curtain on this side, and that hides my, uh, my power station right there right now. I'll probably come up with a better curtain, but that's all I could find right now, so it'll do. Overall, I'm really happy with it. The XOX design was uh, suggested by a friend of mine. Uh, thanks, Caroline. I think it looks really cool. 
And, you know, the wood grain and the wooden handles, they all look pretty good. But the nice thing, it's rock solid. It ain't going nowhere. Now, I already said that it was a little over time. It took me a lot longer than I thought. How was it for budget? Well, let me give you an idea of the costs. Now, the first cost is for fasteners, and that includes screws, nails, brackets, and plates, which came out to $46.39. Next were the disposables, things like sandpaper, towels, brushes, and even saw blades. That came out to $81.04. Uh, the hardware, such as the sash lifts, hinges, and drawer slides, came out to $62.62. .62. The wood, including plywood and the pine boards, was $163.40, which leaves the last one, and it was a big one, stains and finishes, which came out to $143.09. That means a grand total for this cabinet was $496.54 Canadian, or about $370 US. That means the total to date is now $17,868 or $13,500 American, which is still a lot, but I did need a kitchen countertop. Now I have one. So what's my takeaway on a project like this? Never underestimate how long it's going to take to build something. And I was really off. I expected a few days and it actually took a few weeks. If you're on a tight schedule, that's a big issue. But cost-wise, was it fair? $500 is what I paid, or about $300 US. I think that is reasonable. If I had gone to buy new countertops at the hardware store, get the cheapest crappy particle board, I probably could have done it for, let's say, a thousand. But I wouldn't be happy with it. It would just always look, it wouldn't, it wouldn't accent the personality of this cabin. I built this myself, I'm proud of it, and it's got part of my personality in it, and it also has a personality of the cabin before me, because I actually got to use recycled materials that were already here. Now, I know people are going to think, well, is it done? Of course not, because there's three questions people are going to ask. Where's the sink? Where's the stove? And where's the refrigerator? I'm sure to reveal those in a later video. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out my other videos as well.